Hi there, this is Chandler Rose. Welcome to part two of my knee pain trigger point video. Today I'm going to be working on some trigger points in the back of the knee. So it's important that you have your person in a good position for this trigger point work. I have, I have her feet elevated on a bolster and she's laying on a mat. You can also do this work on a massage table as well. You just want to make sure the feet are supported. So I have applied my nourishing massage oil just to help warm and loosen the tissue. Anytime I do deep trigger point work, I like to make sure the structures around those points are nice and warmed up, especially any kind of leg work can be very tender. So you want to always warm up the tissue for five to ten minutes first. Knee trigger points are really good for helping with relief from too much sitting, too much standing, overuse, injury, trauma, surgery. You just want to be really careful of this joint because it is fragile. So the muscle that I want to focus on in this video is right here. It's about kind of this size and it's called popliteus and it is full of trigger points that affect the knee and can affect knee pain. So to work on it, I like to put the knee in a very relaxed position. And I'm going to do that by holding her foot up with one hand. You can also, depending on your height, comfortably set your person's foot on your shoulder. Right now I'm just going to hold it. And then what I'm doing is I'm working in this crease here to, to access popliteus and the trigger points of that muscle. So. I know it's hard to see, so I'll open up the knee so you can see where my thumb position is. And then when you apply deep pressure, you wanna make sure the knee is bent, completely covering up your thumb. And I'm just gonna apply pressure down towards the yoga mat. And you want to make sure your breathing is relaxed and also encourage your person that you're working on to breathe deeply and really focus on making the exhale long. And I'm just gonna open up the leg again so you can see where I am. And my thumb will be, so you're gonna see the hamstrings connect on either side and you wanna be between those hamstrings that kind of pop up or ligaments and I'm coming out towards the lateral side and just giving her pressure there and how does that pressure feel is it too much or not enough Good. and you can hold those points for five to ten seconds and you can even gently move the foot a little bit out which creates just a very passive stretch. Small movements are better. And then anytime I take pressure off, I want to release the leg down. So inch by inch by inch, with the knee bent, you can go in and work that meaty tissue, popliteus and you can work on that tissue for five to 10 minutes. That will help the inside of the knee relax. And even just doing some easy petrissage here will help bring new fresh circulation to the area. And after you've spent a little time opening up the inside of the knee, you can go up and work on the hamstrings. 
so I am starting on the lateral side of the leg. So any of this area is fascial or more fascial, which means it's more tender in a way, more nervy. So I'm just gonna start by working on this point that I found here and stacking my thumbs and pushing in down towards the mat. And just moving maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe not even, to a different point. I'm holding for five to 10 seconds. You can have a conversation about referral, which is where these points will send sensation. Not always, but a lot of times there is referral. It could be the center of the hamstrings in this region could be up towards the hip, it could be down into the calf. If you're interested in trigger point referral, you can also look up a trigger point map of the body online and you can see a general map in color of where trigger point trigger points are and then where they refer to. So the pain sensation pretty interesting. Some of them make more sense than others, but there is definitely wisdom to, to trigger points and where they're mapped because the studies on trigger points show that we all have common areas of referral pain or tension. And what I've realized about working with the hamstrings is that if the hamstrings are tight, a lot of times the person will complain of either knee pain or hip pain above or below the area you're working on. So you're creating space in this region, which is helping to take pressure off the knee and also helping to take pressure off the hip. So trigger point work is very deep and specific, but if it's done effectively, you can really help the whole body feel better, create more length in the body. And I'm just finding trigger points inch by inch, inch throughout this region. There's a lot of trigger points in the back of the leg. And you want to stay on those points for a few seconds until you feel them melt slightly below your thumbs. And then you can come out and do some really easy massage strokes to help increase circulation and flush that area. An effective trigger point work will leave the area or the skin flushed. You're bringing new fresh circulation to that area creating spaces in the leg you can also use your palms if if the side of the leg or the IT band is too tender to do trigger point which can be very effective but if it's too tender you can just simply use palm or pressure as a stretch you can also encourage your person to use a foam roller, which can help stretch that fascial tissue. And after about five to 10 minutes of trigger point work in the hamstrings, I like to come back to the knee and just give it a little more subtle massage. You also have lots of lymph nodes in here and in the inside of the knee so you can intentionally try to move that lymph tissue on a more soft level. And then I always like to address the areas above and below 
where I'm trying to create healing or space. So I'm going to go down to her calf into this area and loosen the lower leg a little bit. And the ringing technique is a really good way to open up these muscles that isn't quite as intense or tender as trigger point. So mixing it up a bit seems to really help the person relax deeper. And then I like to first work on a trigger point right about in the middle of the medius part or the mo most muscle dense part of this part of the leg, the lower leg. And you have the biceps of the leg or the gastrocnemius. And I'm just going to find a point between those two heads and give her some pressure there. Trigger point is interesting because the muscles are layered in such an interesting pattern that you can find a trigger point and then work on it for a little bit and that one goes away and then you find a deeper layer or perhaps you feel almost like a knot or a line or a band of sorts and Really what I think it is sometimes is you're just crossing a different layer of muscle and that direction has changed. So these ones come down like this and their fibers go like this. And so if you work between those heads, you're working on different fibers, different layers, different trigger points. Really, you just want to be at a comfortably healthy level of pressure that is creating space and maybe is feeling a little uncomfortable, but still is creating change in the tissue. And the more space you're creating below the knee, the more that knee will benefit with range of motion and flexibility and just overall feeling better. And I'm just finding different points and staying on them. So I'm just wrapping up this portion of this knee pain trigger point video. And you can even go down into the foot after you work on these trigger points, but it's very important to check out the video on the front of the leg for trigger points in the knee, and also to make sure you're addressing both sides when it comes to this kind of pain. In the knee, it's very effective to get circulation happening on all sides of the leg. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next video.